the two bags too. All these bags. Yeah, because that has all of the <laughs> measuring tapes and notebooks and. You also need to walk the next gate after this. Okay, I'll get the. When you hit it. Run out of the way. Okay. Good. What we're doing um, today is we are releasing the southern ladybird, or um, very fondly called Cleo, actually, based a shortened up of the genus name. And we are releasing it out here on an organic farm. And so this is the first field trial, the first time it's been released to see if it'll eat the TPP out on the farms. Have you really? Yes. Well, again, yeah. the ma main pest of carrot plants above ground is um, aphids. Yeah. The first frost is going to kill all the leaves anyway. Leaves and there's sort of a white, it's like a newly hatched aphid, a newly um, yeah. Yeah. aphid to me. The tomato potato psyllid, or TPP as we refer to it, um, actually the biggest problem is, is that it releases the bacteria into the plant as it's feeding on it. So it's feeding isn't what's causing the damage, it's the bacteria. And so this bacteria can cause two types of diseases in the potato, the psyllid yellows and also zebra chip disease. And zebra chip is probably one of the common things that commercial growers are having a problem with. So they don't know that they have zebra chip disease until the potatoes are actually fried. And what that causes is kind of like a brown streaking or like zebra stripes in a way, which is where it gets its name, across the potato. And many um, commercial companies that use this to make um, fries or something for selling purposes don't, will then not sell those potatoes and will then not accept the potatoes for their company. And so the farmers are losing a lot of money from this. So we chose this ladybird Cleo to be released uh, mainly based off of some laboratory trials that were originally done uh, by Professor Steve Ratton and his postdoctoral student Dean O'Connell and a master's student Andrew Pugh who have all worked with this ladybird and what they were showing in the lab when it was offered TPP to eat it, the adults would eat up to about a hundred at a time they're very voracious on this pest the cage obviously well in, into the potato. We have 13. So I would do three three rows maybe. These are temperature buttons they're called so, so they will log the temperature for us. Yeah. So we're going to have the adults in one line okay. Yeah. Yeah. When bringing in new biological control agents, particularly um, invertebrates, there's a lot of regulations that need to be met um, and a lot of trials that need to be done in laboratories is also quite costly. And this is something that we've kind of learned over time from previous um, examples of introducing a biological control agent. Uh, one of the famous examples is always the cane toad in Australia. Before introducing something new, it has to be really well researched. There's a lot of regulations, protocols that need to be gone through. And so the nice thing about this is this ladybird has been here since the 1970s. It was introduced back then to feed on a beetle that feeds off a of eucalypts and has been a big problem. Um, it was originally from southern Australia and was brought into here. So we don't have to worry about those type of regulations and protocols as much now because it's already established in New Zealand. Oh, four adults? Yep, and there's a mating pair. Okay, so I'll just write M -A -T. one pair. <laughs> I'll write one pair. Yeah, that sounds good. Here we are, that's okay. There we go, that one well, stayed four, on. I would try them on the leaf, but if they drop to the ground, we don't mind. Okay, there we go. Interesting there they go. Difference in color between those two. Yeah, oh, yeah, slightly one. different. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, this one is as well, actually. Yes. That one's just gonna sit there. It's got a bit of shock. weight, a bit of weight. We that just, is good. Thought they'd just sit there.
Well, the biggest thing we hope is that when we come back next week, they're still here. Um, I guess the one thing we don't know is if they're actually going to fly away. And if they do stick around, we hope that we'll be able to see evidence of mating, so laying eggs. And also, we're taking initial counts of the TPP, and we will take them um, next time we come back, and every time we come back, to see if there are any reduction in numbers as well. I mean, we were also going to be, we release the eggs as well, so when we come back, we'll also be hoping to, the eggs will hatch out and the larvae will persist. Um, there's always concern that they'll die because there won't be a food source, so we're hoping that we'll be able to come back and see larvae as well. This one here looks pretty healthy, doesn't it? Lots of green, which is always a good sign. I'll just note down just the eggs only on that one. Um, so I'm just basically noting down if it, there are already larvae present. If there are no larvae present, then we can tell that the eggs hatched successfully in the field. Right. Yep. Cool. So we'll put those. Staple them and leave them to their own devices. Excellent. Take my time. <laughs> these ones and the eggs should hatch out and these guys should just grow up happy and healthy eating psyllids and aphids. Leaf there. And there we go. So now we've got eggs and larvae just on the underside of this leaf here. So they've got some aphid eggs on this little bit of plant material they came with. So they'll eat those when they first hatch out. And then hopefully move out onto the plant and start killing other things and yeah, eating and growing up into big strong ladybirds. <laughs>